Thank you, ji -won. So all three of South Korea's major political parties have condemned North Korea's suspected uh, fifth nuclear test in the strongest possible terms. Now, we're going to take a look at the history of sanctions that have been imposed on North Korea following uh, its previous nuclear test conducted by the regime. It might give us an idea of what kind of response the international community uh, will have this time. Here's Guan Sua. When North Korea conducted its first nuclear test a decade ago, the United Nations Security Council was quick to respond as its 15 member states unanimously adopted a resolution against the regime. First and foremost, the resolution forbid any further nuclear tests and demanded Pyongyang abandon all of its nuclear weapons and freeze its nuclear program in a, quote, complete, verifiable and irreversible manner. Along with this came sanctions in the form of asset freezes and travel bans on people involved with the regime's nuclear program, restrictions on imports and exports of military and technological materials, as well as luxury items. After its second nuclear test three years later, the weapons embargo was extended. The new resolution authorized UN member states to inspect North Korean cargo and destroy items suspected of being connected to weapons development. Tougher financial sanctions were imposed in 2013 to hinder money flowing into the regime's proliferation programs. Three individuals and two entities were added to the blacklist. With the sanctions getting stronger with each nuclear test, the process of putting them together got lengthier too. Resolution 2270 was born on March 2, 2016, almost two months after Pyongyang's fourth nuclear test. Cargo inspections were made mandatory, and so-called sectoral bans were included for the first time restricting trade of coal, iron and titanium. The banking and financial sector were targeted, and sanctions on 16 individuals and 12 entities were added to the list. Due to the general consensus that the Korean peninsula needs to be denuclearized, independent countries have been pursuing their own efforts in punishing the regime. South Korea suspended the inter-Korean Kaesong Industrial Complex, which was the only joint business cooperation between the two Koreas. The U.S. included a so-called secondary boycott to its new law, and Japan banned ships and North Korean people from entering the country. Dubbed as being close to a terminating resolution, the Resolution 2270 was supposed to put an end to North Korea's violations. But as Pyongyang shows no will to abide by the rules, many have expressed the opinion that there is room for more punitive measures. Kwon Soa, Arirang News.